All right, so Kevin McCurley's in here, and this monster just popped up out of the debris. And I was here to witness it. Please tell me you got that. I missed it. Ah, By two seconds. One of the babies popped right out of the egg. Oh, Ooh, this close. <laughs> Dude, we're like dead quiet, and then we just hear you. What, what the f***? <laughs> Kevin McCurley. Nobody wants to talk to Nobody you. Nobody wants to talk to me. But we can pretend. So this baby just hatched out just literally a minute ago. Poked its head right out of the egg and dove right out. Take a look at that creature right there. Baby dwarf came in captive bred here at Nerd. <laughs> oh, look at his little head. His eyes. You can see their, their snout is a little bit shorter for from when they first hatch out. And as they grow, it kind of fans and grows out. You're ruining Kevin's video. Kevin I, I, he's going to come in here and be like, what are you doing? You're bonding with them. He literally just said that to Connor. Oh my God. So this one's your... This, this one's, one's mine now, I guess. One. Yeah. This one refers to you as dad now. Just sitting there. <laughs> You can see it, it's uh, on the sides of its head. Its ears fanning in and out. Wow. It literally popped out of the egg its head and then dove out into the water. And I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important while they're this young that we don't scare them and we try not to hurt them because it's essential while their first, their first interactions with humans be positive because that can mold the whole rest of the way that their life goes when we're working with these animals. Which is why, you know, when you get a wild caught animal, uh, it's very difficult to gain their trust. But these babies, from the moment that they're hatching out, they're being born into our hands. And we're working with these animals from the time that they come out of the egg. And just building that trust with these animals is so important. And I was trying to be so good, I walked away. You actually yelled at one of the employees here for trying to bond with the Caymans, so. You could be the first one there. This is I wait all year for this. This moment. is like this is a big deal. <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> Kevin, what do we got? I have my favorite babies ever. These are they can be attached to me for the rest of my existence. This is so exciting. We breed carrion humpback flies. No, no what we really breed here is uh, cougars, dwarf caiman. And uh, usually I know when they're gonna hatch, when we, uh, we can call to them and go, ow, ow, ow. Oh, look, look. Ow. Ow. Did, did they hear you? Yes. So they talk back to me. And that means we're ready to hatch. So one egg that I missed in the nest, and that egg found it later on, and that egg went bad. So that one egg is, uh, gave enough foundation to attract these little, like basically fruit fly guys. So, are you getting good, good on that? Yeah, I mean, as much as I can. Hold on. <laughs> we'll take them up. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a lot of eggs in there. What's that white stuff you got on there, Kevin? Well, this happens to be hatch, right? Uh, hatch media. I know. So what? This is what they generally do. They'll come running out. Right there, there. there you go. <laughs> it might start happening. So they hear each other and they hear their their parents or mommy, like letting them out. There you go. We got to capture one of these doing it because that was that's one of the easy. Cool well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick some right up and they do it right. Yeah, right. Same. When they feel each other going, basically what they do is the the motion of the siblings moving on top of the rest of the eggs lets the other ones know that it's time for them to come out. It's safe to come out. Because typically they all hatch right around the same time. It gives them the best opportunity at survival out in the wild. Because if there is a uh, predator there and there's a whole bunch of babies running around, they're not going to know which one to go after. Mass exodus. Yeah. Strength and numbers. Strength and numbers. Like baby turtles, like sea turtles we yep. see. Where's mom though? 
I'm well. Mom's mom's in the other room, so I'm no, no, no. surrogate mom. No, in the yeah. wild. Like, where would the mom be? Oh, mom's right there. She's right, right there. to the nest. They yeah. call to the mom. The mom then goes into the nest, starts getting into it. Actually, help them get out of the eggs, which is what we do. So they call to her, and then she immediately responds like we did. And uh, this is this is the whole bonding. Take a look at this. So the crocodilian eggs have got two layers. So they've got a hard top layer, like this, that helps protect them throughout most of the incubation. And as they start to hatch out, they start to poke with their nose. It breaks the hard shell on this outer egg. And there's like an inner egg that kind of works, uh, it's more like a snake egg where it's, it's very pliable and very soft and squishy. So if I want to do this, a lot like um, it's made out of like uh, almost ceramic. So depending where the nose is, so the mom would go over here and she'd start gently biting. There we go. Here we go. She would gently start biting. See right here. And she would break the external part and help this little guy. So right here. <laughs> you can see it, it's just, it's gotta be strong enough. So they have a little egg tooth and that little egg tooth is going to uh, slice through this membrane. Come on, little guy. So I can make it a little bit easier for him and, and do it myself. So now we have what is basically like a snake egg. And uh, see how soft and pliable? Like literally there's no external shell. So come on. So he's like, let me out. So mom, all she would do is just perforate that membrane. Get ready. As soon as he finds that little opening. It can be very dramatic and very sudden. How do they breathe uh, when they don't have air? So they're basically, uh, their blood vessels are all attached to the out or the all around the inside uh, membrane of this egg and then they're able to get uh, oxygen in the atmosphere and pull it in. But once they get right towards the end and they start demanding more oxygen within the, they can get from that vascularization, then we start having an animal that like knows it needs to get out of the egg or it will drown and suffocate. So these guys are just hatching right now. So it was right over there. This is live footage of Kevin ruining a YouTube video with his Instagram. <laughs> Oh no, don't stop. Thank you. What? <laughs> My little owls that live here. Hmm. No, uh, oh, 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 look at him, look at him. Oh, look at a little shell on his head.
There we go. He's like, I know what's going on. This one's name, Rob said, is Sheldon. Oh, look, we have another one. Oh, oh my. Hello, my name is Sheldon, and my name is Sheldon, because I have a shell on my head. Uh, what? Yeah, they're all coming <laughs> out now. Okay. Ready for these? Mm. So this is basically, everything's gonna wanna eat this little guy. So this is just a little fearful, a little nibble, but we get, we get them right past that as we work with them and socialize them because ultimately we're now, you know, the mommy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> one, one at a time. No. So these guys have belly buttons too. This is attached to its yoke. Can you see that? Sure can. So that will allow, we're pretty much, there's really nothing left in the egg at this point. So it's absorbed it all. And that little muscle will cinch that off. So that will look a little better within a day or two. Covered in pearlite. Okay. So, like right here, I don't know if this one's already come out. Have you? All right, that one's already come out. Oh, here you go. What's <laughs> oh. off? That's a double duck. Else I have hatching, I have some snakes hatching, and I have water monitors hatching too. This table's completely full of stuff hatching right now. Yep. Kevin's all giddy and stuff. Oh yeah, this is the best. I like that one. Oh, that one, huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you can differentiate. <laughs> well, that's why it has an extra. Oh, 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 I got it. Oh, we're never not recording. all day just give me like an infinite amount of eggs this is not an easy one to breed certainly in captivity we breed these completely indoors we're going to be making a nice big new uh display for my dwarf caiman downstairs oh yeah oh yeah we're going to be putting that we're going to build like a kind of like a caiman room i guess downstairs we're going to do a, a croc monitor one i think we'll do amazon basin emeralds We'll do water monitors and um, bones pythons. It's like we're turning into a zoo or something. I would love to be a zoo. We're pretty close to one. Anybody thing. rich? Anybody wanna? Kevin, you're the partner? one that's you're the Ferrari guy. I got, I got guy. everything. I just need somebody that's got <laughs> deep pockets so he can do it better than mine. Yo, we can make this cage out of cardboard. Jace, get me some styrofoam that you found in the dumpster. No. <laughs> It's a little slightly a gross exaggeration of what I'm capable of, but still I feel that way. Look at that. If I had a zoo, the stuff I could do. Kevin's a billionaire, don't want to fool you guys. Mm. Billionaire. Kevin McGurl. <laughs> <laughs>
big money I am. <laughs> you know, this is like, yo, this is like a Versace's uh, tank top. It and I spent like, up like 40 or 50 bucks on it. I think. Oh my God, I'm gonna go into total denial, but we're gonna, because I knew this, oh, oh, oh. Uh -oh. I knew this moment was gonna happen. Oh, I can hear it. Get ready. Oh, look at that. This might be the one you want. Woof! Look at that go. Instant, <laughs> instant crocodile or crocodilian. Just wonderful. I I'm so so fortunate. I'm able to breed these guys, and I raise my my uh, breed my adults from babies, and I socialize them. And I think that was one of the things that allowed me to be able to breed these successfully. I've done this many times now, and uh, the fact that my parents are so social and uh, just don't really have any problems being around people all the time. It allows them to be more comfortable and then breed and then we create these babies, these F1 generation babies that are remarkable. So look at that. Do you want to say anything like, hey, if you think that you're good enough and smart enough to afford one of these guys, you can check out our store. Do you want to say anything like that? Uh, yeah. What's so our I, store? Our store for a lot of our captive bred animals that nerd is newenglandreptilestore.com and hopefully in October we're going to be launching a new website and that's going to have more things. It's also going to be a little bit more interactive. We're going to have some videos, a lot of care stuff. So it's very important for us when we are selling our animals to make sure that we find the right customer for a lot of these animals. Some animals so unique like the baby dwarf came in. It's like I don't make a lot of these and every I can sell way more than I can ever make. So I really want the quality of the keeper to really appreciate what they're getting. And generally by paying more, you're pretty much showing that you're very serious. And we want to talk to you a bit about the setups and just what to expect. But I want you happy. So I want two years later, you're hopping up in one of my videos, you know, making comments on YouTube saying, hey, I got an awesome water monitor. He's wonderful. I see you, these comments. People are saying, I got a water monitor. It's great. I love that. I always write like wonderful because that's me commenting. But I'm always thrilled and when people have these great uh, comments about getting animals from us. But the, the new website, we're going to have, try to get a lot of care aspects in there. So uh, we don't have a lot of time to talk to everybody or basically uh, give you enough information over the phone. So we want to do like videos. It's a reference. You can return to it over and over again. And hopefully I'm getting across my information in a, a way that's very digestible and I kind of simplify it and try to make it so it makes some sense so you retain it other than me just spouting off a bunch of facts or my version of things and I want you to get it so your brain's like taking it in and like why is he doing that and I try to explain that so hopefully I'm accomplishing that I'd like to hear your comments to tell me what you think of uh, my techniques and what we're doing here and don't forget to like and subscribe help us grow our YouTube channel because it is kind of little it's growing faster right now it, it, it is growing a little bit oh. faster but it would be nice to get some of this information out there for the masses so we can get people uh like i love to do this and the fact that i want to educate people i want people to be better versed and be more successful in what they're doing and when they have that kind of success they show this to other people and you're spreading the hobby strength is definitely in the numbers uh make sure you're a member of us arc uh rodent pro has been sponsoring our videos so i really i like that because you really can't beat their uh their product when, you, when it comes to you it's just it's it's immaculate and they have so many different types of uh, uh, rodents and also reptile feed so uh, what else can I say I don't know I can just say I love baby dwarf cannon